estimated alpha of our point estimator. And what we do, and what we do then is we have to compare yeah, the t statistic of our alpha with the critical values of minus 1.96 or and 1.96. So when the t-statistic of our estimated alpha exceeds 1.96, then given we have a significance level of 5%, we would reject the null hypothesis that our estimated alpha, our point estimator, is uh, zero. So we then infer, okay, once the t-statistic of our estimated alpha exceeds 1.96, our point estimator is statistically significant given we have a level of 5%. And the same is of course if, it, if the t-statistic falls below one, minus 1.96. Yeah? Again then we would infer that our point estimator is statistically significant on a 5% level. And the same is true for all of our other point estimators. Yeah? All of our point estimators had a probability distribution, yeah? also our beta 1 had uh, follows the same distribution, which is a normal distribution, at least according to our assumptions. Okay, and then we would compare, we need to compare the t-statistic of our point estimator with the critical values of the normal distribution, yeah, of our, with minus 1.96 and 1.96, because we know that 95% of the probability mass are between minus 1.96 and 1.96, and whenever the t-statistic is in the critical zone, we reject the hypothesis that our point estimator would be zero. Yeah? So now the question arises, how do we compare or how, how do we compound uh, the covariance matrix? Because now we know, we have now to, to have in mind our point estimator, uh, it's a vector. Yeah? In, the, in the case of the cap n, we have here the alpha hat and the beta hat, very simple. That's our point estimator. Yeah? Beta hat consists of alpha hat and beta hat. So this is now a vector obviously and this is our numbers. Um, if we have uh, the Palmer and French three factor model, then this vector would be obviously uh, longer, so we would have the, the, the beta against the market factor, let's call it beta m. We would have the beta against the size factor, let's call it beta size. We would have a beta against the value factor, beta hml. So we would have basically our point estimator vector beta would in this case be a 4 by 1 vector. Yeah? And the covariance matrix of this vector would be 4 by 4. But in our simple case, in case of the cap n, and given that we are only interested in one asset, so our, the covariance matrix of our beta vector is a 2 by 2 matrix. Yeah? So the covariance matrix of our vector beta hat looks like this. Yeah? We have here the uh, covariance of alpha hat and alpha hat. We have the next element would be the covariance between alpha hat and beta hat. Here this element would be the covariance between beta hat and alpha hat. And here the fourth element would be the covariance between beta hat and beta hat. So it's a two by two matrix. Yeah? And we know the covariance between alpha and alpha is the same like the variance. Yeah? That's the variance of alpha hat. And the covariance between beta and beta is the same like the variance between uh, the variance of our beta. And don't get confused with the notation here. Yeah? So of course, obviously this is, a, this is a vector here. I, I could make it also in, it's difficult to make it in, in, in like bold, bold letters. And uh, think about this is in bold letters, beta hat. Yeah? 
and this is in uh, standard letters. Yeah? So whenever, actually in, in, in vector notation, you use bold letters. Okay? And whenever you uh, have like standard letters, then you have scalar numbers. Okay? So this is basically how it looks like. That's why, all, that, that's why this matrix is often referred to as variance, covariance, covariance matrix. And in other textbooks, it's just referred to as covariance matrix. But it's the covariance matrix or the variance covariance matrix of, of a vector. Yeah? So that's now important to, uh, important to bear in mind. So and what we, do, what we then have to do is, in order to compound the t-statistic, we have to, for instance, the t-statistic of the alpha, what we, how we would compound it is, okay, we uh, take our estimated uh, alpha, uh, alpha hat, and divide it by the square root of this guy, what is here, of this element, the first element in our variance covariance matrix. Yeah? That's our t-statistic, the t-statistic of the alpha. Yeah? And the same, if we want to have, if we, if we want to test if the market sensitivity, if the exposure against the market detector of that asset is significant, what we have to do is, we have to, de, uh, so the t-statistic of the beta, what we have to do is, we have to take the point estimator, beta hat, uh, this guy here, and divide it by the square root of the second element on the main diagonal of our covariance matrix, okay? That's how we compound uh, the t-statistic. And what is above and below the main diagonal, that is for our purposes for, for, for this course, uh, not that important. It becomes a little bit more important later on when we talk about multiple equation models, but as for now, this is uh, not important in, in our simple framework, okay? But important for you to remember is, okay, whenever we talk about the uh, covariance matrix of a parameter vector, yeah, we have obviously, you know, it, the, the uh, dimension is in relation to that parameter vector. Whenever the, the parameter vector uh, has a certain dimension of, let's say, k, k by 1, then our covariance matrix is of dimension k by k. And we have the variances of all point estimators always on the main diagonal. Yeah? Irrespective of how big the covariance matrix is, always the main diagonal, which is important. And above and below the main diagonal are the covariances between the point estimator. That's important to remember. So let's take this away now. That's just for you to know, because all this, what we discuss here is obviously important, that you, that you know what you are doing. And later on, when we run it, when we implement this uh, in, in MATLAB, you will s exactly see what we do, and we will exactly know what's going on in the code. Yeah? Otherwise, if you don't follow here, this lectures, you have no clue uh, what's going on later. So next, so obviously in order to get the t-statistic, we have to compound, we have to define the, the covariance matrix. So what's the, what's the, uh, the, the, the variance of our point estimator beta hat? Yeah? So that's obviously what we want to know. So um, maybe I should move it more to the uh, left hand side. So the, the variance of our uh, point, estim point estimator beta hat. Yeah? Again, that's uh, in the case of the cap n, that's a two by one vector. Yeah? We have the Feynman branch uh, five vector model. This is obviously a six by one vector because we have five risk factors and an intercept term. So five plus one is six. This would be a six by, uh, six by one vector and the covariance matrix would be six by six. In our case, again, this is a, what is here, the covariance matrix of, of, of beta hat is obviously, it must, must be a two by two matrix. So how do we define it? It's defined as the expectation of beta hat minus beta
times beta hat minus beta prime. So, 2 by 1 vector minus 2 by 1 vector, what comes out here is 2 by 1 times 2 by what is 2 by 1 transpose is 1 by 2 times 1 by 2. So what comes out here is 2 by 2. Uh, exactly what, what we did, the, the dimension that we require to have. And if it would be, again, if it would be a 6 factor model uh, or the 5 factor model, then this would be 6 by 6. Uh, if we have k risk factors, this is k plus 1 by k plus 1. So we have now uh, operating with this definition of the uh, variance covariance matrix and we know from our earlier analysis this intermediate step, right? So we know that beta hat minus beta is nothing else but x transposed x inverted times x transposed epsilon. So we, we use this intermediate result that we have uh, compounded earlier and plug it here in. So what happens is, okay, the covariance matrix is then given by, let's plug in what we have here. So x transposed x inverted x transposed epsilon times the same thing, yeah, x transposed x inverted x transposed epsilon and this is transposed right because that's now important don't don't forget it because this guy here is transposed right so we know how to operate with uh, the transposed sign so we have to change the order and what we also need to remember now from linear algebra courses is that if we have a matrix A inverted transposed A inverted transposed or well, the inverse of A transposed is the same as if we first transpose A and then invert it. Yeah? That's the definition, the rule of a linear algebra. So we, and we have to apply this rule here now as well. So re remember this rule. So what happens now is, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's just multiply it out. So what we have is the expectation of x transposed x inverted x transposed epsilon yeah so the first term nothing changes so we transpose this guy here first and, and pull it to the front x trans epsilon transposed then we have this guy here and we know also from linear algebra courses if we have a if we have a matrix Matrix A transposed, transposed is A, okay? So we apply this rule to this guy here. And what happens then is uh, X transposed X is X, okay? And we know from, from the previous rule, X, uh, a matrix inverse of a matrix transpose is the same like the transposed matrix inverted. So what we have then is here simply um, x transposed x inverted. And we close the parentheses here again. Okay, so now it looks a little bit like a like a sandwich, something is here in between. So obviously the 
the question is, what is the random part here? Yeah? What is here in this equation the random part? Obviously it's not x because we have assumed uh, that our x is predetermined, so the only random part is obviously the epsilon times epsilon transposed. So what is that? So let's let's move our, our equation up because we need we need some space here. So let's briefly move this equation up. And here, that is now the uh, interesting part, yeah? That's what we have to think about now. So, we know epsilon t is a t by 1 vector. If we transpose it, it, it becomes a 1 by t vector. So obviously, this product here is a t by t matrix, right? That's a t by t matrix. And how does it look like? So, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so on, until epsilon t times itself transposed, so epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so on, epsilon t. So, t by 1 times 1 by t is t by t.